You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because you're feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> well, 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 welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Will Dugson, with my buddy, Kev Huggin' Duggan. Sir, <laughs> let's not forget Kyle the coach, Duggan. You guys, you you live in the same city. Stop acting like it's a big deal that you're in the same room. It's annoying. <laughs> it's not a big deal, dude. It's, it's Malibu. Yeah, you just do it deal, to try bro. to piss me off, and it works. <laughs> <laughs> We've been planning this for a couple hours, actually. Um. All right. Well, hey, folks. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. Uh, we've got a heck of an episode lined up here for you. There's been little bit of things happening with the Chargers. Uh, this, and we'll, we'll touch on all that we can. Uh, we've got uh, two segments lined up for you this week. We've got a Bolt Insight and a Fan Focus. Double dipping. And uh, we've also got, as always, a hefty Ask Bolt fam. So let's waste no time and start off at the top here, folks. As per usual, the Charger Chat episode that you're listening to right now is happening right before... A big event Something that is big. mandatory yeah. minicamp. Classic. Just classic Charger Chat timing. Uh, so we'll obviously talk all about uh, the minicamp once we have another episode. Once we start <laughs> in, a week from now. Yeah. in a week from now. So uh, know that we are watching, we're listening, we're figuring out everything to talk about, and uh, we're excited to see who all shows up to this mandatory meeting. They better all better be uh, everyone. Better be everyone. Yeah. Better be everyone. Yeah. I it's mean, mandatory. I don't. It, well, are the only there one that you excuses? thought might not show is Eck, but now he's all signed up, got his little bonuses. Dude, he's not going to miss in. media day, right? That's when the, I don't know if you saw they posted some videos of it, and he's got yeah. the coolest like silhouette, like getting fired up with lightning going on yeah. behind him. You're not going to miss that. Can't miss that. No, the media day for those that haven't seen, go t- just go check out Chargers Twitter right now and get it's ready crazy. to have your socks blown off by some of the Los Angeles media abilities that. uh that the Chargers recruited. There's some pretty, yeah, pretty fancy crazy. ones there. Hey, how also, how about uh, Derwin James wearing a polo to minicamp? Oh, yeah. Have you guys seen <laughs> he's that? All business he's wearing class under, under his pads. Like, cool. I think he's going to start a trend. It looks cool. It looks like you're there for business. Oh, yeah. I can you know guarantee I mean? you throughout the country, every high school football field will have several kids with polos on. Absolutely. Guaranteed. It's- yeah, yeah, game changer. Game. Changer. We may just have like uniforms, like flag football, packs and teams. Just, just color, just polos. And they're and they're the yeah they're the floppy collars, so they're still like loose. Yeah. And, you know, it's not too mm-hmm. restricting. You're not wearing it's the a you know collar, no, no tire or anything. That's Although it the is next very level. soccer, it's very soccery kind of. So maybe That's we're okay. borderline. We share that with sports. with football. I also. guess. Okay. So hey, why not have a little bit of a crossover? We'll cross now, over. if he wears uh, it during the regular season, that will be that'll be the game changer. The, I don't that'll think be, the NFL will allow it. Yeah, really? They allow like yeah. the hoodies, not in a game. Sure, I've seen Keenan Allen wear a hoodie. Yeah, in a game. he's done. Some, they have some very weird oh. stipulations on what you're allowed to rock during a game. I don't think a collared shirt is going to fly. Let us know down in the comments. I don't know. Will Derwin yeah, James guys wear, a polo? wear like <laughs> guys wear jewelry and stuff? So I guess why not? Yeah, yeah. Maybe hey, maybe he rocks a polo. Might be a trendsetter. But, uh, well, recently, Dan Fouts was interviewed at the Chargers Invitational Golf Tournament. Did you guys see that? Chargers had the Invitational Golf Tournament. Had a lot of players show up. I didn't up. get it invited. It was pretty fun. Yeah. That, Bullshit. They must have lost our invitations in the mail, I went to I top guess. golf for four hours instead and really worked <laughs> on my game. Would you have rather gone to the Invitational? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I would have no, embarrassed, you shut up. I would <laughs> embarrassed myself. It would have been you too much pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Too much pressure. Would you have gone to at least be a caddy? Yeah, I'd have caddied for sure. There you go. Yeah. See, it's all there. Because who else was a caddy? Justin Herbert. Justin friggin' Herbert. So listen. Walk, walking in, in the company. steps of great. <laughs> potato, <laughs> potato. Kevin and Justin. <laughs> it's called so, off. Yeah, so Dan Fouts was interviewed and had this to say on Justin Herbert. Uh, said we had a good time. We talk a little football now and then. Quarterback talk, you know, nuances, things like that. A little, little something. <laughs> yeah, quarterback such a, talk. A little, <laughs> such a cheesy line. Uh, yeah. E- each year you learn a little bit, and his learning curve is pretty good. Uh, he's so brilliant just as a person and a good player, obviously. 
I think the world of him, really. I know he's going to get healthy, and hopefully he can stay healthy throughout the year. Uh, he battled through injuries last year, and a lot of people didn't realize how severe that was. MFIA. Hmm. From I, the MFIA. I'm there for him. I just know that because of our relationship being Ducks oh. and Chargers. That I'll always be there. Hmm. It's just. Yeah. Hits you. It's right here. Yeah. Right, right here. here. I wish it was Phil saying it and not Dan Fouts, though. Well, he might be saying it. We why just is didn't Phil get not coming to the golf tournament, huh? That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't checked in on his high school team if they're in. <laughs> Phil is a conundrum yet. as far as like ever since not he just playing with the Chargers anymore. Fell off anymore. the face of the planet down in Alabama, just disappeared. If he doesn't have a scheduled press conference, you're not going to hear from him because mm -hmm. he doesn't post on social media. But no, he's doesn't... so good at it. Like he was so good at all the press conferences and stuff. Yeah, it's just a shame that he doesn't isn't more a part of the Chargers organization. So like LT is full on employee of the Chargers. <sighs> yeah, totally. and, and Antonio Gates, they're both constantly yeah. representing the Chargers. And yeah, we'd love to see Phil, but you know, Phil marches to the beat of his own drum and does what he feels that Phil well, does stop. best. Get <laughs> get get locked in. Do what get we want, in Phil. Yeah. Come on, let's duck it How up. Get rid, of your, get rid of your own drum and. Come join the the the, the get out of that band. drum line. Yeah, <laughs> and get into ours. Get out of that drum line and get into, into my huh? quack drum quack line. quack quack. <laughs> oh, he's not uh, a duck. Maybe that's it. Maybe he feels I think he's out. jealous. Odd man out. NC State yeah. is cool, but not Oregon cool. But it ain't yeah, that cool. Yeah, he's not a duck and a charger. <laughs> not quack. No quarterback talk. Quack. Mm -mm. Quack. 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 Cool right. runnings. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Corey Lindsley was also apparently interviewed recently and had this to say on his guidance to his younger O-line teammates, saying these guys, they really do operate like vets. We'll have to learn through stuff, but when it comes to not freaking out on the field and just <laughs> being cool, calm, and collected... <laughs> Rashawn and Pip. Like, I see like, like <laughs> take a breath. You're freaking out right now. Okay, calm down. I can't. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh god. All right. Wait a minute. Yeah, like the brown paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's just rocking back and uh, forth. Corey's like, side. Corey's like, not again, Trey. Uh, Here's damn your bag. It. <laughs> All right, let's start it back at the top. <laughs> Sorry, uh, finish your quote. <laughs> we'll have to learn through stuff, but when it comes down to freaking out on the field and just being cool, calm, and collected, Rashawn and Pip, obviously, and the guys next to me who I directly communicate with the most, those guys do an excellent job of that. None of the yips, uh, the rookie jitters, or anything. These guys have been great. <laughs> Still pretty funny. <laughs> freaking out out here. Yeah, they're not, you know... <laughs> And are running around with their head on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but still awesome. I mean, to hear that from a guy who's been in the league almost 10 yeah, years now, if not 10 years. He's by yeah, far he's the tenth most tenured guy in, on our offensive line. So to hear him yeah. say that kind of stuff is obviously awesome. It's, it's yeah. good, good news. Um, and then on the line's uh, top priority this year said, I think overall it's really obvious uh, the run game lacked. Uh, protection Amen. game, I think we can be better. That's what this offseason, a lot of it, has been about from a protection standpoint. The communication, the simpl simplification of everything. Also just relying on our instincts more and helping out everybody as much as we can. I feel like we're making a lot of improvement. Even right now, the run game uh, will take accountability for that. I'm sure you could pick it apart to a bunch of different reasons. But ultimately, up front, that's something that we take pride in. Yeah, please. Cool to hear him say it. Yeah. You know, there's some people yeah, that might have been just like, yeah, we could have been better. You know, there were certainly areas of opportunity, but to pinpoint the exact thing that everybody else is thinking is like, dude, run game. Yeah. And he's, he's the senior player in there by at least six, by seven years, six years. So um, th that's trickling down to those guys too. Yeah. So I think there's, hopefully there's accountability. They got, they got to stay healthy and they'll be better. It will. Big time. Uh, well, you know who else will be better? It's you, <laughs> folks. If you go on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash charger chat, and we've got a new name we do. to announce. Yes. <laughs> Bolty McBoltface. Thank you. Welcome to the party, pal. For joining the Patreon, <laughs> folks. 
Uh, and if you want to join, uh, oh wait, wait, something cool is about to happen. Something cool is coming down here, folks. Uh, for those that are already on Patreon, listen up because this is this is your official announcement. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, we've come into uh some pretty cool things, and those of you that uh, we've been wanting to kind of like up up the give back to those yeah. that are on Patreon right now. We want to love you. We want to love you just a little more. Hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is the official announcement that those of you that are currently on Patreon in the $10 spot, special tens as we like to refer special to tens. them here, uh, you are going to be receiving a one of these. So oh, shit. the lighting kind of makes it a little hard to see, but we've got some <laughs> patches here that are I, I'm going to say it, it it's a little gauche these look freaking awesome they're rad. They're <laughs> yeah, they're really, are really freaking cool. Really um, cool and so yes if you join if you join now on the special 10 you're going to get one of these patches if you're already on the special 10 what are you going to get you're going to get one of these patches oh, shit. if you're on patreon and you're not a special 10 and you upgrade what are you going to get special 10 a one of these patches so <laughs> Go on over, check it out. Uh, you you can have uh, Papa Wooldog to thank for this. He decided to kind of yeah. take it upon himself oh! to get a handful of these beautiful buttes, and uh, we're going to be handing them out here to you special 10 folks. So thank you, Papa thanks, Wooldog. Thanks, for, Pop, thanks, thanks, Papa, Papa Wooldog. Uh, and uh, if you don't want to go to patreon.com slash charge your chat, that's totally fine. It'd be cooler if you did, though, because you get a patch. It'd be a probably. lot cooler yeah. if you did. But uh, <laughs> if you don't, you can go on over to our regular website, chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. We've got t shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chat tiers in the member section and ask questions in Ask Ball Fam. So go check out chargerchat.com. All right, gang, it's time to go on to the next segment. It is Bolt Insight. Hmm. And you might recognize this face coming in to chat with my man, Kev Huggin Duggan. Yeah. Uh, if you're a fan of other Charger podcasts, you and might recognize. Now's the time to guess who this might be. Oh, yeah. So Put, lock your answer in, folks. Who is this going to be? Pause, type in who you think it's going to be, hit play. We've not given really, I guess we've said there in another podcast. Charger chat there's podcast. There's so there's a, here. yeah, there, there, there's a handful it's a, it's a podcast. of folks to pick from. Yeah. Uh, so lock, lock your answer in now and see if you're right. As we go to bolt insight. As soon as that clock starts, your ass is mine. When I met Justin Herbert, man, that dude is big as hell. You know, the goal is to just keep it rolling. Come in hype. Cause we have a lot of things to be excited about. All right, guys, we're back for another bolt insight and we are super lucky to have Tyler Shoon from the guilty as charged podcast. What's going on, Tyler? Not much, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Congratulations on getting my last name. Correct. Sometimes people go with schoon. You went with Shun, so thank you very much. I won't leave now. I, I take uh, journalistic integrity important. I did my research. I got some uh, phonetic spelling. I got the whole deal set up, so you're good to go. I'm, I'm prepared. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm sure you can spell Eckler and pronounce in Bosu as well. I, the, definitely the first one. Um, it can't always <laughs> be counted on to pronounce the crazy names on our team all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, but we're excited to have you, man. Just realized that we haven't had you on. We always have uh, uh, your, you know, your your co-host on with us, uh, Mr. Haglin. So we're excited to have you on and pick your brain and uh, get to know a little bit more about your thoughts on the upcoming season. I got to start off because the big news that came out like a month ago or a little, maybe a little past that is that you guys partnered up with the Chargers, which is, dude, congratulations. That's like the coolest thing you. in the world when we heard that news. So what's that been like actually getting, I'm sure you get better access to players and coaches and that kind of stuff now. So what's that whole thing been like? Oh, it's been phenomenal. And honestly, working with the media team, they are as advertised. You you see the content they put out, of course, and they're fantastic. Social media, media production, anime schedule release, et cetera. But then working with them, they're, they're just fantastic people, very good at their jobs. Um, as far as access goes, it's definitely been easier. You know, we started yeah. working with the Chargers over the last couple of years trying to get players. And sometimes it would be like, here's the seventh rounder. Here's the sixth rounder, sure. which is cool. Like, hey, hey, man, I'll take it where I can get it. Totally. Um, but then the, the second week we had them, uh, we were working with them. They're like, well, we couldn't get Quentin Johnson because he's busy. So how does Tom Telesco sound? I'm just like, yeah, yeah okay, sure. Sure, no fine. big deal. <laughs> yeah. And so, and I had like 12 hours to prepare. So we were just like, oh my gosh, here we go. The general manager. Um, but awesome. it's been fantastic. They're awesome. I've loved working with them. Uh, I'm definitely 
you know, over the years working on YouTube or working with the podcast, I've always, you know, started to get less and less nervous. Of course, the more you do it, the less nervous you get. Uh, the first couple of weeks, man, I was like, my knee oh, was dude. shaking. The heart was racing because it's like, three, two, one, go. Yeah. Don't mess up. You're on their channel. Here you go. Don't throw away your dream. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, I haven't been fired yet. So we're doing, hey, doing all right guys, so far. Got off to a good start. You guys <laughs> yeah. got off to a good start. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. That's awesome. And that, for us, like we've had a couple players on and I know that feeling, the the beat and oh, heart yeah. beating out of your chest. Like Sean uh -huh. Merriman, I was like the beginning Ooh. of it. Thank God it was taped because I was just like staring at him for an awkwardly long time like <laughs> oh shit you're sean merriman all right here's my question so yeah yeah <laughs> i feel i feel that energy but um yeah man let's kick it off just got some kind of general questions for you we're kind of getting ready you know mandatory mini camps coming up real soon at tomorrow mm -hmm. when we're talking right now so you know let's go back to you know what what the draft you know you know everyone's got their kind of the pick that they not a lot of people projected the first round there was a lot of kind of like who what did we just do <laughs> but your overall thoughts on kind of how the draft went and if there's like a player that you think fits perfectly for us. Yeah, the draft was interesting because it, it was so easy and obvious to pick Quentin Johnson to the Chargers if they went receiver. But we all, everyone was talking about Zay Flowers or, or uh, Jordan Addison. I'm like, well, he's too short. He's too skinny. So they'll just find a receiver some other time. But it was so obvious that the 6'2 guy yeah. um, was staring us right in the face. Um, but they drafted him. And that was definitely, if you saw Steven's reaction, he's like, oh boy, Quentin Johnston. And I was yeah. like, okay, like, let me get behind this. Um, and we really could, especially after Arjun, you know, shared some stats with us. And it's like, okay, he's uniquely good at something that the Chargers were not good at last year. Yak after the reception, missed tackles force, that sort of thing, and accessing the deep part of the field. Yeah. Uh, it's more of a, a scheme thing last year than anything else and injuries. So I, I've grown to like that more and more. Of course, you go to training camp and, and OTAs and you see, Oh, he's catching everything in front of him and he's having fun and he's, he's got yeah, some swagger the hands, out there. Everyone, the hands, yeah. everyone's talking about hands, hands. Like, all right, let's let him, let's let him play some ball a little bit. We'll see what he does. Yeah. And it's like, oh, he fixed it. And I'm, I'm sitting there scratching my head, like, did they just pull a Herbert on us again? Yeah. Where it's like, you know, you watch Herbert in college and it's like, well, he's throwing screens half the time. How's he going to be any good so early? And then they, they get him in camp, they fix some things, and suddenly, oh, well, Justin Herbert, here we go. I'm not putting that kind of expectations on him. Yeah. I'm just saying it's amazing to see just in a short amount of time, how what you thought he was in college could change so much with the right people, with Keenan Allen, et cetera. Um, but the draft overall, uh, from my time, very short time, covering the Chargers on the podcast, which is like three, four drafts or whatever it is, I actually think this is the best draft that Telesco's had from start to finish. I agree. Now, that could change. You know, I was all about the Joe Reed pick, you know, stuff like that. And that didn't pan out. So things happen. But I really looked at each player and watched them and said, like, okay, these guys actually have something to contribute early on at the minimum and then long-term as well from, from, you know, Quentin Johnson, obviously, Tuli, Dayon, et cetera. There's something all these guys can do. And even Tom Telesco or Brennan Staley said, like, we didn't take projections this time. Yeah. We took guys that could contribute right away, which I think was really, really solid. So is this, a, is there a Rashawn Slater pick in here? I don't think so. Um, is there a Rashawn Slater, Asante Samuel Jr. duo in here? I don't think so, at least not initially, but I really do think start to finish this is well okay start to sixth round this is probably the hey, best you gotta give, hey last name doug and you gotta give love you gotta give oh, love, a little no. love to, you gotta give love to max our, uh, our boy uh, max no i hear you though i hear you yeah um, definitely but it's it's interesting like the idea that this is one of the first drafts in my recent memory where it wasn't like a guy we're drafting is immediately going to be number one mm -hmm. on the on the depth chart yeah. this was a great draft because it's like wow we're finally able what they've done the last few years we're finally able to start stacking and getting some guys that are like legit first round as like, is he a wide receiver three? Is he our wide receiver three? <laughs> it was the last time you as like a, a charger fan was like, oh yeah, our first round pick will be our third, our third depth on the depth chart. So that that's an exciting yeah. aspect of it for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I know. I it's either way they could have gone outside of maybe safety. Everyone was going to be the second guy or the third guy. And I, I guess that really does speak to the roster in general. Like, they did put together a really solid roster last year, and most of that's held over to this season. So, yeah, just being able to take, you know, your linebacker of the future or, or Tuli obviously can learn behind two greats, and Quentin Johnson can learn behind two greats. Like, it's a really, really solid process by the Chargers. Um, I was really thrilled with the draft overall. Yeah, and if we can stay healthy, I, I personally think there should be a draft for trainers. Like, I want to get the first <laughs> round pick and get the best trainer with the best track record. Yeah. That's the guy I want on our team. So yeah. just keep these dudes healthy and, like, let's let them do their thing because we haven't totally. seen it yet. You know, it's exciting. Um, so talking about, you know, seeing these guys on the field that, you know, the 
camp battles are soon to be coming. We're mm-hmm. about to start seeing, you know, what that depth does, who's pushing who out of spots. Um, what's kind of some of the your favorite camp battles coming up in terms of some of our positions? Yeah, we'll see what the battle looks like because JC's still recovering from his injury, although faster sure. than anybody expected. Well, I didn't but... think I didn't see him. I didn't expect that at all. Like <laughs> Not at all. individual drills right now, no way. No, I, I have major goosebumps just watching him. Like, yeah, I expected him to, you know, do some jogging on the treadmill, lifting some weights. But then he's out there cutting on the field with his helmet. You know, yeah. so I don't know. He's got something magical, and that's fantastic. I really want to see who they decide to deploy at corner because, I mean, heading into last year, it's like, okay, we'll have Asante Samuel Jr. versus Michael Davis. JC's the obvious number one. Ross Galhan's your slot. Great. And then Michael Davis was the gunner. Then he wasn't. Then he was their best corner. And yeah. he was so good that when they lost him against the Jaguars, everything fell apart. So now Michael Davis is the corner one and JC yeah. has to come back. So do you put Asante Samuel Jr. in the slot? Well, Asante Samuel Jr., they, they showed last year, they don't trust him to play the run. So that's where they put in Jaw Taylor. So is Asante Samuel Jr. the best corner four on a team? Probably. Like, he's fantastic. Um, JC probably won't start the year healthy. We'll see. Again, I, I'm not going to hold it against him. Like, I think he could yeah. on his rate. So the corner battle, but also just the rotation, yeah. that's what I'm really curious to watch. Um, and then I'll say running back on the other side because they they have to figure out what they have yeah. in Kelly and definitely in Spiller, I, I guess in round tree as well. And some of the undrafted free agents, Eckler's probably gone next year. I don't think there's a way that they can retain him um, on any kind of deal because you know, I think if you cut like four of their biggest contracts next year, they only still have only $2 million in cap. <laughs> yeah, like they yeah. have a lot of room to work or they have to figure things out next year. And so adding a running back at, you know, 5 million, 6 million, 8 million, whatever, it's not going to work out. So what do you have in Joshua Kelly? What do you have, especially though, in Isaiah Spiller, who I can't figure out why they stopped giving him the football last year. I can't figure out why they decided to go away from him. And maybe that's as simple as Joe Lombardi didn't, it didn't work. You know, they yeah. picked a player that maybe Lombardi didn't jive with. Or I don't know. Same thing for maybe Xander Horvath. So I was about to, I, I was about to say that exact same guy. The Horvath thing just baffled me. Yeah. No. And I understand like some guys can be forgotten if they get hurt. So I think Horvath got like a little injury in the middle there, but to yeah. go away from what was working was a surprise. And I know Spiller likes on the numbers. Like I think it's like 2.8 yards per carry. It ain't great. But watching him in, in the film and watching him there in the games, there was more than that. And they just had to kind of do some grind out yards and that sort of thing. But there was some great stuff against the Chiefs. So, yeah, running back, corner, uh, really excited to watch those battles for sure. Absolutely. And you've seen kind of what our uh, – it's not an easy schedule we have this year. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like they kind of threw the tough guys at us. And not only that, but they threw us – on national TV or the <laughs> national streaming or whatever it is all season yeah. long, which I personally love. The more eyes we can get on our team, the better. Mm-hmm. But what do you think the, you know, your prediction for kind of what this looks like for the season? Is it is this our AFC West season? Can we finally win, win the AFC West? Like, what are your thoughts right now? I was all in last year on the Chargers winning the West because, oh, you, you lost Tyreek Hill. Okay, you got Travis Kelsey, but Derwin yeah. James will take care of that. Put Juju Smith-Schuster, whatever, like, no problem. And all the Chiefs did was lead the league in EPA per play and be the and win the Super Bowl. Sure. So at, at this point, as good as the Chargers are and as tough as the Chargers play them, I have to give it to the Chiefs at this point until proven otherwise. I think every year, whether I was writing for Bolt Beat or on the podcast, I said, Chargers year, Chargers year, Chargers year. And they and they just never put it together. Um, and even though this Chargers team is fantastic, the Chiefs have earned the right to be considered the division favorites. Mahomes has earned the right to be the MVP favorite um, every year until proven otherwise. Um, so I do have the Chargers at like 11 and 7-ish for now. Or 11 and 6, excuse me. Um, I, and people are like, well, that, that's one jump, one game jump. That's it. You know, how could you only predict that? Because they were so hurt last year and Joe Lombardi, et cetera, et cetera. But I think people are, are missing it. And you pointed this out just a second ago. The schedule is so much harder. This this schedule is grueling. I mean, outside of maybe the Bears game, and I guess maybe the Packers, but we'll see. And that's in Lambeau in November. There is, I mean, game after game after game is difficult. And, and some of the teams that even maybe aren't so hot have had the Chargers numbers. So like, yeah, maybe the, the Patriots aren't a good team, but Belichick's got the Chargers. He's and, a pain you know, in our ass every complete time pain. we play him. Every single time at Denver is still a problem. It's like, why'd you pick them to lose in Denver? They just do. I don't really know why. There, were, there was a time where I was always watching Raiders football with my dad. I know people hate that. Um, but like the Raiders would always beat the Steelers for some reason, even though they had like whoever that quarterback was. Like nobody was very good. For some teams just beat some teams for whatever reason. And so 
Yeah, the Chargers, I think 11 and, and six is actually a, a really strong record. I know it's not the division win, um, but I, I, I still think they'll be successful this year. Um, and it really, at that point, is just going to hinge on coaching. Like the coaching advantages do make a difference. And if Brandon Staley can take a big step forward and they can really close things out on defense, I mean, this is a gosh darn good team. I only really care about them getting to the postseason. Once they do, yeah. who cares what your record is? Like, go beat whoever's in front of you. Sure. It would be cool to get a, a buy that first week. Like, that would be pretty. So, mm. so we're, mm. as you know, we're ridiculous sometimes with our <laughs> just undying passion and just optimism for the team. So, yeah, we're feeling like we got a couple MVPs on the team. Of um, course. Offensive rookie of the year, most likely. Yeah. So uh-huh. there's there's some good <laughs> we're putting out extra vibes. So um <laughs> hopefully something sticks. But um Yeah, yeah. What's your so, guys' predictions yeah. this year? Uh we, we same thing every year. We right now, this time of year, we're 17 and though. That's just how we gotta roll. That's how we start. <laughs> we start and then we go from there. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's yeah, just yeah. hard as a, as a fan, is just an ridiculous I am. I look at a, a you know the schedule and it's like I can't say that you're gonna beat me. Because in my mind, when I sit down to watch that game. Well, I'm, I know we're going to win until halftime sure. and something crazy happens. So. <laughs> but don't trust us for don't take any of our advice to Vegas, as we've told you multiple times in the past. Uh, that's what that's what Shun's for. So. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, brother. So let's. Uh, yeah. So last question. Are you you guys making it to any games this year? We're going to be able to hang out in Thunder Alley. Yeah, I think Steven's going to try to make it down for one or two games or so. I'm a season ticket holder, um, so I'll be down there as many games as I can. We'll sure. see. You know, things pop up, birthdays, holidays, you name it. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll be down there as often as I can. It's certainly a pr- plenty of primetime games, so I'd love to be down there for all of those. Um, I'm definitely not watching the Bills game on Peacock. I will definitely <laughs> try to be there in person. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my mom's become a huge Chargers fan over the last couple of years or so. So, awesome. um, yeah, it's going to be a, more of a, a family event this time than just me and my dad. Badass. And if you guys make it to that home opener, let us know because we're all going to be there and I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll get we're going to come back and smack two around and shut everyone up on Twitter. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Got to so, make uh, Acho retire again. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Idiot. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, all right, Tyler, it was a pleasure having you, man. Thank you so much for taking the time coming on. It's uh, it's always great getting your insights. And uh, yeah, we should definitely do it again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait to see the Chargers go 17 and 0. Let's go, baby. And good luck with the uh, Chargers <laughs> stuff. You guys are doing great. Thank you. Take care. I'm in. Well, there you go. Tyler Shoon on the podcast. This is his first time, right? Yeah. We had, I was going to leave got that Hagelin. as a hint. We yeah. got Haglin <laughs> like so many times. And I was thinking about the other. I was like, shit, we haven't had Tyler on. So I just hit him up the other day. And he's like, yeah, let's go. I'm That's like, pretty right, cool. Game yeah. on. Sweet. Awesome to have Thanks you on. Coming, Thanks, yeah, brother. big time. And uh, 11 and 6. Gotta, that's six, we gotta that's work, six wins off, though. We got to work Sorry, on dude. the prediction a little bit. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I respect for... I, I, I get it. Yeah, He's in the mainstream podcasting. Sure. He's not in our genre of shamelessly stupid, just yeah. picking us to win every game. Um, <laughs> but it but feels better, when it, doesn't when it? it? Hey, when it hits, it's gonna, gonna hit gonna hard. When smart. it hits, yeah. it's gonna be great. So, Tyler, uh, again, <laughs> again, congratulations and thank you for coming yeah. on and to chat with us. Yeah, we thanks, really man. do appreciate Keep it. Keep it over there. Um, all right. Well, now it's time to go on to the next segment. It is fan focus. So let's see what fan we are bringing into focus this week. All right, guys, we are back for another fan focus and we are super lucky to have Julian from Grandview, Washington. What is going on, Julian? What's up? How's it going? Good, man. Good. We're excited to have you, brother. You're part of our Patreon, and we're super appreciative of that. And we got to hook up through there, so this is exciting for us to meet you. Um, so let's let's kick it off the way we always do, brother. Like, how did you become a Charger fan, especially from Grandview, Washington? How did you become a Charger fan? Yeah. So growing up, um, well, being from Washington, a lot of my family uh, they were Seahawk fans. So uh, I guess for like. Since like five years old to like eight years old, um, I kind of rooted for the for the Seahawks because I mean I had no other choice. I just watched whatever was on TV, you know. Sure. Um, and well, being from Washington, Chargers were never on TV, so I never even got to see, you know, unless it was like prime time or something. But even then, I was probably just watching the Seahawks prime time games, just because of the family, you know. Yeah. Um. But it wasn't until like I was about nine, ten years old when I started playing uh, over here. It's called Grid Kids Football. 
I know you guys talk about it that you and your brother did it growing up. Um, yeah, like what was it called in San Diego? Uh, Pop Warner Pop for Warner. us. Yeah. Yeah. So for us, it was called Grid Kids. I mean, that's a cooler I'm guessing, name. I'm not gonna. I'm thing. not gonna lie. That's a cooler name for sure. Yeah, Grid Kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, and well, I never really uh, played like a organized sport or like a team sport because I grew up and I wrestled all my life, but. Like the first team sport that I ever played was football, and I was, it was around the age of nine, ten, I'd say. And uh, so when I went, uh, my coach he put me at running back, and uh, so I kind of just learned that, you know, that the offensive side of the ball in the certain position, I kind of seen where the players would line up, you know, and I noticed, you know, LT one time just. Seeing the dark visor, uh, dark visor, and the face mask was was unique, you know. Yeah, totally. And uh, I think it was a powder blue jersey, but I also remember the navy blue jerseys. Uh, like that's when I first started watching. Uh, yeah, but I'd say LT. That's awesome, dude. We, I love hearing that because there's so many, there's so many like important players in the history of our franchise. LT is definitely one of them. The amount of people that became fans that were from other parts of the country that I'm sure their parents were like, "What are you doing? We're not a Charger family." And you're like, you know yeah. what? I'm going against, I'm going against the grain here. I found my favorite player, and that's my team. So I respect the hell out of that. That's so awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. From like being from over here, I mean, there's probably i grew up with just one friend that was a charger fan and maybe like one other kid but never really talked to him you know yeah it wasn't open so like yeah that's it's crazy that's awesome so what are your thoughts now man our team's super exciting the last couple of years obviously justin oh, herbert's yeah. amazing but this draft yeah. has been really cool we've added even more playmakers like what are you most excited about for this upcoming season i mean you know, another cool thing, um, so Kellen Moore, um, just to get off topic, but Kellen Moore, he, uh, he played high school football 10 minutes away from me. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah, he was, uh, he went to Prosser High School. And yeah, like I said, that's just up the highway, good 10, 15 minutes, and I'm there. Um, I remember hearing stories about him, but uh, I never went to go watch a game, so I couldn't tell you personally, you know, but uh I think one thing I'm excited about is uh, to see him run the offense, especially um, knowing how successful he was, I guess, with the Cowboys. Yeah, definitely. Um, I can just imagine with Justin Herbert, you know, I mean, he's, he's a lot different than uh, Dak Prescott, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, for sure. And I think that that's yeah. a really fun one because – it's easy to say like a player you're excited for, but he's got all the players and he gets to decide where yeah. they're going to line up, what route they're going to run, how we're going to run the ball. So I think that is like the perfect answer. He, it, so exciting to see what he's going to do with this offense this year. Yeah, it was just, uh, it was just frustrating, you know, with uh, Dylan Lombardi. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of held back too much, you know, that it really let it, let it loose. Now, I'm sure with uh, Cal Moore will be letting loose, you know, with uh, Keenan saying, you know, oh, yeah. just throw it down the field. The excitement, the excitement's there for sure. And it's fun to hear from the players too. When you hear them talking about it in their interviews and they're kind of like, they're kind of like laughing when they answer the question because they're so excited yeah. about it. It gets me fired up for as sure. a fan. So, you know, speaking of that, like yeah. what, what gets you most like fired up as a fan? Like when, when, when the game, when the season gets closer and the games are, they're starting to happen, what gets you most fired up as a fan when the games get close? Um, I'd say just like, Obviously, the Instagram videos, just seeing them practice throughout the week and, you know, just the the interactions that they have, like the little quick dap ups at the beginning, you yeah, know, just yeah. kind of they're walking in and just kind of fist pumping. You can see what kind of mood they're in. It's just it's just cool, you know, seeing like Derwin James or Joey Bosa, you know, they just have a like something just gratifies towards them, you know, yeah, some okay. stuff about those guys. That's a and then we'll do yeah, I was going to say, and the little we get of Justin Herbert, you know, it's good. <laughs> yeah. He's he's a little shy, but what we do get of him, is, it's it's pretty, pretty dope. Yeah. There's our social media team, dude, next level. They're getting me fired up right now. And we're like in yeah. June 12th and they're posting, they literally just posted like a two and a half min, minute video of all of Justin Herbert's throws from one practice. And I I'm know, like, I just, seen that. Did you watch that? I'm just that. like, this that is exactly what I needed today. This is what I wanted to watch today. Yeah, and I, I'd imagine we're going to see a lot of that this year, especially with with uh, Quinson Johnston. Sure. The, the 
round one draft pick. Uh, that was good. I liked it. I didn't know who he was. I'm not going to lie. I didn't know who he was, but I, I liked it after a while. Just even hearing what he's 6'2", or basically 6'3". He's a big guy. Jumps a 40-inch 40 40 inch vertical, like runs, a, what was it, like a 4'4 four four or something, 4'5"? <laughs> he's fast, dude. He's that's, quick. That's crazy, yeah. It's yeah. pretty much like Mike, but just faster and more athletic, it seems like. That's a problem, too. Mike's lined up you know, at wide receiver on our offense. That's going to be a problem for anyone. So, yeah, so that's exciting. Dude. All right. Well, let, let's get you out of here on this, brother. You know, we like to ask people like, you know, what is your favorite and your best charger memory um, being a fan for as long as you have? Um, yeah, so I'm 25 now and I started liking them when I was nine, 10 years old. So that's been about 16 years. Yeah, dude, you're seasoned. You're uh, a seasoned yeah. vet yeah. charger fan. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's gone by fast. Tell you that. Totally, dude. <laughs> um, but. I'd say I'd probably have to say the first game that I went, the first game that I actually went to, and it was uh, it was here in Seattle. It was 2018, I believe. So it was when we had like uh, uh, we still had Phillip. Um, we had a, bu- a bunch of older guys like Melvin Melvin Ingram, mm-hmm. uh, a couple of the DBs that left. You know, just. Uh, What's that? What's the big guy that went to the Raiders? The linebacker? Oh, Perriman. Our man. Our, he was Perriman, my boy. Yeah, Perriman was my guy until he became a Raider. Yeah. Yeah. Denzel. I actually took a picture with him. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. He's one of the few players that I met. But I'd say that's probably my favorite memory because we kicked the Seahawks' asses that day. And it yeah. felt, real, felt real good. <laughs> nothing like seeing one of those in person, too. Yeah. And then um, I'd say probably the comeback from the Kansas City game. Yeah. But was it a comeback or yeah, it was, it was a two point conversion? Two pointer at the very quarter. end of the game, closed it out, made the yeah, Chiefs not I'd win. Say the, probably those two. Yeah, made the Chiefs mm-hmm. not like I remember them having the t shirts ready to sell AFC West champs, and we f- slammed the door on that. They couldn't sell those shirts after we finished that game with them. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Those are great memories, dude. But um, dude, Julian such a pleasure having you on um it was great talking to you and getting to hear a little bit more about you and your story man and uh yeah dude if you ever get down to sofi get to a game you gotta let us know because we gotta hang out yeah for sure i do plan on going on a game here in the next few years maybe not this upcoming year but i'll go and i'll be i'll be there to hit you guys up dude for sure do it for sure so thunder and thunder alley oh yeah thunder alley all day long dude it's gonna be fun so all right julian was a pleasure man thank you again for your time and we'll talk to you soon thank you have a good one thanks brother okay love you bye okay love you bye well, thank you, Julian, for coming on and chatting with Kev. Yeah, a round of applause yeah, for Julian. He's the man. He's and for being beautiful. on the Patreon. Hey. We appreciate yeah, you, bro. We really do appreciate that. I just I love the fans that like they might be from another part of the country, but that they see a player, that's their guy, that's their team for the next 16 yep. years. Oh, yeah. Um, whatever he's rocking right now. So he's a veteran. So um, yeah, man. And hopefully you gotta let us know when you eventually get to a game because we are going to hang out. Please. Uh I, I, anybody that's listening, but you especially, Julian. We want to meet up with you, bud, big time. We, we got to get some pictures you, and toss back a beer or something like yeah, that, yeah, if that's possible, yeah. if that's okay, if that's in the repertoire. But uh, again, Words. thank you for coming on and chatting with Kev. And now it's time to go on to the next segment, folks. It is Ask Bolt Fam. Let's go. <laughs> time to put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> guys. Go jam a thumb up his butthole. That's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Okay, love you, boy. All right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam, and we start off at the top with Forecast True. Certified Fresh. Who asked the question. Dear Charger Chat, as a baby Charger fan, it's been an absolute joy to have felt the warmth and camaraderie of the Bolt Fam through this podcast. Podcast. Every week I look forward to Wednesday because unfortunately, as an Australian, the time difference means the podcast lands a day later for me uh, with the shits and giggles that I know will inevitably come. <laughs> now, it hadn't been easy navigating a new sport with no support, especially feeling the disconnect as a female whose friends have no interest in sports. 
Experiencing Chargers football for two years solo was brutal, oh, especially how we ended the 2021 and 2022 seasons before I found this podcast in early 2023. Now, I know there isn't a question here, but with the sincerest of gratitudes to the Charger chat, Adam, Kyle, Kevin, and to the rest of the board fam, thank you for creating a shamelessly positive environment week in and out. I'm so excited for the season to start and for us to go out there and win it all. Fam, boot the fuck up. <laughs> okay, love you. Bye. Uh, dude, this is exactly why we do it, dude. This is yeah. it. Time. I, you've just made me so Solidified happy. Solidified it, yes. The, the, yeah, we appreciate you. And the Wednesday drops. Brutal. That is pretty brutal. Hey, and, but hey, you might get the get future you news. Day. Yeah, you you're one day closer to getting the news we missed the previous week. Yeah, it works right. out. Yeah. Or one day further away. Or <laughs> I guess that's not being very shamelessly positive. Yeah. That's well, she's looking for truth. positivity um, here. I also like the Australian who has an awesome accent asking for the German accent. German, yeah. throughout the I know. Whole thing. He well, does a pretty good. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. She's probably heard. She's like, no, she's like, like, like I've heard the Australian. She's like, <laughs> why don't you hold on to I that? I don't want to hate these guys. Hold on to <laughs> don't that. do it. <laughs> for somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, forecast true. Thank you. Means and a thank lot you for to the us. kind words. Thanks Truly, for coming yeah. on. And don't be a stranger. Come on with some questions. We'd love to have you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, let's move it on to the next one. Swipe a graphics. Who asked the question? Hey, dudes, got three questions. One for each of y'all legends. One for Wooly. What microphone do you use? Two for Kyle. What <laughs> position did you play in football? Three for Kevin. What's some of your favorite work you've done for film? And four, no question, just f the Raiders and Caleb, you bye. And for Kyle. And for Kyle. <laughs> I have I have one of those this names one that time? comes very, very good Kyle. valley girl name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. solid. <laughs> All right. One at a time. The microphone I use is an Electro Voice 320. Uh, He's like, you know, you know, like those like um, um, people that get high contract killers. He's basically a contract killer. If you saw his collection of microphones and you thought of them as like weapons, he <laughs> yeah, like opened like up frame, a case. He's got a case nice with like cutouts. That like opens yeah. up. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like I'm gonna f this up today. The way John Wick <laughs> has guns, I have microphones. Yeah. But uh, this has been the best one for podcasting. I have, I do have others, but uh, as yeah, far as podcasting like I said, goes, a sweet mold, perfectly cut. <laughs> Microphone kit. Yes. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love looking at it. It's a great microphone. <laughs> Same one Pat McAfee uses if you watch. Oh, but nice. uh all right, Kyle, what position did you play in say football? I, I played a little bit of everything. I was a sturdy kid. Uh, so I played a lot of offensive and defensive line. Uh, but then as I hit my growth spurt in high school, what I finished playing was uh middle linebacker. I played the will, kind of like Kenneth Murray of our defense. I feel like you went from like five foot to like six one pretty quick <laughs> yeah it was like a uh, eighth grade i shot up like six or seven inches it was crazy because I, I was gone for school and i came home one day and i hadn't seen him since the the transformation and i'm like yeah, yeah. what the fuck happened to kyle <laughs> he's not this chubby little guy anymore yeah. look at this dude he's <laughs> oh he's all grown up I met my grown wife up. pretty quick right yeah. after that thank god for that yeah, shoot up you know what i mean i don't know if that that in yeah. earlier <laughs> all right <laughs> I don't know if she would have gone for an O-lineman, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. She's she, a, she's she a linebacker have. gal, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, Kev, no, what's... Let me tell you, nobody was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kev, what's some of your favorite work you've done for film? Oh, uh, I, got a, I got a couple handfuls of movies that uh, I've shot that are out there. I think a, a fun one you can get really easy is a movie called Truth or Dare. Yeah, It's like a, a, hor a horror movie. It's good around Halloween time, but it's mm -hmm. uh, it was fun. Truth or Dare. Mm -hmm. and I think it still on netflix or it's pretty much available everywhere so can you talk about the one that might be coming out? oh yeah i got a new movie coming out in a couple months yeah pretty cool yeah yeah can't say anything oh i can't that. i'm not under contract okay <laughs> uh, it's a new movie called blind river yeah it's, it's kind of a cool it's like a thriller yeah. about this lady who um is blind and her daughter gets abducted and she has to i'm hooked figure out i'm in what's going on it's it turned out awesome so all it's right a good movie. 
Keep we'll an we'll eye let out. You, we'll let you know when there's more details about how you can yeah. see it. Yeah. Well, we won't be shy about it. No. Um, all right. Swipe a graphics. Thank you for asking the questions. Let's move it on now to Alan Henry Smith. Certified fresh. Who asks a question and he starts it off with 67 year old grumpy old fart living in New Zealand. Now, I don't know if he wants a voice. <laughs> that's the voice. Or if he's so just him. telling that's me Alan that's Henry what Smith. he is. So I'm going to, I'm going to try Alan Henry Smith. <laughs> If I'm off, <laughs> don't be mad at me, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I don't know. You got to know how it goes here. So here we go. The charges came from back in the Dome Demand Air Choreo days. Looking to get uh, over for a game October, November this year. Is it possible to watch any training sessions? Uh, can I purchase a Don, a Dan, oh, it's my eyes, they're going blind this year. Dan Foucher, is that possible? You may have done all of your foreign accents in one voice. It's, <laughs> it's like the exorcist when there's like five voices coming out at the same time. Yeah, I, we are Legion. That was a whole lot of <laughs> That was mind blowing. There, even when Irish at the end. <laughs> that was cool. I, you know what? Sometimes you swing for the fences and it uh, doesn't quite go you how you off. want it. Hey, yeah, right. hey, that's if, all right. If you ever want the jambalaya of voices again, just ask for the jambalaya and you'll get that. 67 year old grumpy old fart New Zealand. That's just everything. <laughs> um, all right. So let's see. Looking to get uh, over to game in October, November this year. Hope you can make awesome. it. Definitely. That would be rad. Uh, is it possible to watch any training sessions? No, I can't remember if they. Open. They don't have open ones. They do. They do. Not when they do the, the season spring oh, training, oh. there's a, a few charger people that will do like live streams that I've seen. Oh, really? kinda, okay. I would just hop on Instagram and start following people that post about chargers. Cause you'd be surprised. You might be able to get somebody that went up in the stands and goes live and you can see the practice behind oh, the okay, scenes. There you go. But they don't really do anything. The chargers related. No, but like the chargers. I think it's like, he's saying that when he comes over in October, can he go watch a training session? Oh, oh. gotcha. Yeah, not during the season. It, yeah, preseason, they off. will. They'll have some. Open I actually ones. think you can because they, the they have the they have their practice field over by the IKEA down there. And I've talked to people who have like gone and hung out and been over there. So really, yeah. So you may not be able to like get great eyes on it, but you can be near the energy of it <laughs> and just message us. Is that we'll something that interests you. you? We'll try and connect you. Um, and can I purchase a Dan Fount shirt? Well, I mean, I'm not going to stop you. Uh, I don't think they have any. <laughs> there but not at the game you won't be able to oh find not any. at the game <sighs> you know what, that's true that's bit. truly missing i haven't seen a really good dan fouts shirt done in like the cool graphic style of our current mm. players that should be fixed hey swipe a graphics um would love for your help here because <laughs> he does awesome <laughs> graphics maybe he can help us out with a logo for uh maybe alan a, a sick dan fouts shirt well and if you if you know of a sick dan fouts shirt that you can uh point alan henry smith in the direction of uh hit him up on twitter let him know where he can find one so that way and it's at z-a-c-s-m-i-f-f -F. that's yes. his handle there you go all right, Alan Henry Smith, uh, welcome. Appreciate hope I didn't. You. Uh, <laughs> that was fun, right? I hope I didn't screw it up too bad. But thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Dennis Andrew, who asked the question. This video made me super upset, and I hope it makes you guys upset as well. To go as far as labeling Herbert as naive is appalling. I would love to hear this pod give their thoughts on this report. Love you guys. Boat up. I we watched this together. Yeah. So, so for quick reference, um, there was a video. It's uh, it's Chris Sims and Mike Florio, I yeah. believe. And Kevin and I, we were flipping around on YouTube. We actually started to watch this video, and then the remote was in my hand, and I smacked it out of my hand as soon as <laughs> you was, started talking this shit. It was really you start listening to it, and it's just one of those types of segments on a sports show that they just they're kind of pulling. You know, grasping, grasping at straws, straws and yeah, trying to make a, off season. a yeah, make a mountain out of a molehill kind of thing. And it's really it, it basically it was him say, taking the quote of Herbert saying, you know what, they're working on the contracts, uh, but it's out of my control. I'm just going to try to focus on being the best player I can be. And him going like, well, it's not out of his control. He's is that he control? Holds all the and like as soon as he starts taking that kind of a tone with it, like, it, I'm not interested in her video. Yeah, and you don't know Justin Herbert. Yeah, and, and you that's don't know just players his way that... of avoiding a question. Exactly. And like... why would you say anything else when your team's right in the middle of negotiating, you dumb dumb? Right. right. That doesn't do anybody any good. Right. That's it's not the guy that Herbert yeah, is. Yeah, what's he gonna say? Well, you know, I really want just a five year deal, so I have some leverage for a second contract. 
but they don't want to give it to me. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you want him to say? Right. He's not going to take that approach with it. So, yeah. uh, is it angry and upsetting? Uh, we didn't even freaking watch annoying. it. I literally like, turned yeah. it off as soon as he said that shit. I'm like, like there's nowhere this can go that's going to be anywhere insightful. Right. It's one thing if somebody has a uh, a different opinion about something. It's another thing when somebody just takes a quote and just twists it in a way that makes you go, that's not even the point. Yeah. Like what yeah. that that you're just trying to get your either clickbaiting. It's, a, it's all it is. It's all it is. It's so. Uh, and they're usually very pro Herbert Sims and Florio when they do segments. I think they it. listen to him as a Sims. Put Sims put him, put him like as top number four, four quarterback. Yeah. yeah, call them the machine. Yeah, so that's it's, that his category. It was machine. definitely a poll. They saw how much attention what's his nuts got last year for calling him a social media quarterback. Yeah, they're trying to jump on the hype train to get a little yeah. bit of, a couple clicks, but not stupid. interested. Not watching it. So mm. not giving them the the clout so we were just as outraged as you though we were yeah no the outrage was there but it was just i don't give these people the time of day yeah. so thank you for asking the question dennis andrew let's move it on now to devin byerly you did it who asked the question jc jackson is a legend comeback player of the year candidate if he can come back to this as a the same player for my question what is each of your favorite Chargers moment and why? I haven't been here long, so I wanted to find out. Mine is being at the game in 2018 against Kansas City at Arrowhead when we won on a two-point conversion to clinch a playoff spot and keep hopes for the division alive. The Chargers fans at Arrowhead that night were electric. Bolt up and K-Love you bye. Have, have, a, have, a, have a brew and a bag. And a, just soaking up some cosmic rays. rays. <laughs> I want to apologize. We've been watching a lot of American Gladiators lately, and it's really just infusing yeah. into me and how cool Malibu, Malibu was. was one of the best American Gladiators. Yeah. Um, but as far as the question, <laughs> yes, JC Jackson is a legend. Absolute possibility for comeback player of the year. Uh, but favorite Chargers moment and why? 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 I think the I remember vividly. I wasn't as hardcore of a Charger fan at this point, but mm -hmm. I remember vividly winning to go to the Super Bowl. And oh, like yeah. just how my whole family just lost their shit and ran, everyone ran outside, was running around our cul-de-sac, just losing their minds. Like that that stands out as something I want again. Mm -hmm. Like there's been amazing moments, but like getting that was like, wow. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that for me. How about you, Kyle? I don't know, because usually there's a this lot question... to pick. This question is usually tagged with uh that you saw live. And so we have always had like our go to what we saw in person. Mm -hmm. But like all time charger memory, I'm trying to go through the file of like <laughs> good of good memories because yeah, I don't know. Like this most recent playoff run that we had with Phil, um, 2018. Yeah. That was fun, man. Beating beating the Baltimore. Ravens in Baltimore. That yeah. was a really, really high moment. Also, a couple of years before that, we beat Cincinnati in the opening in the wild card round. And I remember watching that, um, just like losing my mind. So excited. So I don't any any playoff game that we've won when when we when we beat the Colts there in overtime when little um Sproles took over. There's just, I don't know, any air any playoff win was they're just so much fun. So what, Let's get another one of those. Year, huh? It'll be my next one. Yeah. There yeah. You go. Good answer. Um, let's see. I would have to say, I mean, the the Philip Rivers first down hand motion was oh, so was good. just a great little moment. Yeah. But as far as like a, like a celebratory type thing, um, it, it's just funny because I saw a clip of it recently. I was like, man, what a great time that was! Was when uh, Antonio Gates set the all time tight end touchdown record and everybody uh, everybody just came in and piled on top of him in the end zone and just yeah. crazy how open he always found a way to get like it's yeah. it's crazy how open he could just find a way to get like he wasn't elite fast or anything like that but he just had to make perfect. a couple steps turn around catch the ball touchdown he was designed yeah. for that position it was uh, such a great moment to see so LT breaking the touchdown record was pretty insane too that yeah, was, that's, that's, tough. that's a mean, great memory yeah, yeah. yeah. But guess I can remember seeing Antonio Gates get that touchdown record, yeah. and that was just what a moment. And still hasn't been broken, and never will be. God damn it! If I have anything to say about it, Devin Byerly, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Boltville seven one four, who asked the question. 
Guys, did you see the behind-the-scenes media day clip where Justin flips off the camera? It's hilarious! What do you guys think Justin secretly hates more than the media? One answer each. Now put yourselves in a scenario where you were best friends with Herbo, and he asked each of you to go with him to do what you guys picked and begin flipping people off with him. Would you do it? What's your favorite creative way of giving someone the bird? Mine is pretending uh, to search for something in my pockets and then pulling out the bird. Ha! FTR and Caleb, you bye. I gotta go with the, <laughs> the machine. <laughs> oh, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Pull out the balloon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm all that. about pulling out the pocket too, especially if I have a shirt pocket because then it's. Yeah. Like, it's a little oh, more oh <laughs> <laughs> weird. and you do like I the weird one target. where, where people on hold sale. their fingers yeah. up high like that or do you do like the full blow uh, no that looks weird you got to give a little bit of bend a little yeah, bit of bend. around it it's like a fort it's like a fortress <laughs> yeah it's like the disney castle at the beginning <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, an elegant, it's an elegant way of flipping it's very it's elegant, yes. elegant yeah um although i'm a lot or, this lately, is good i don't I like I like just doing a thumbs down. Like yeah. if somebody does something mean, you just give them one of these. It hurts worse than being flipped <laughs> off. You know, you're just like that was sucky. You know, and then you your hand out the car window. Off, you Boo. Are you just walking around yeah. your house all day to your kids? Like, <laughs> no, in the car. It's in the car when somebody does something really stupid and they're just driving ultra aggressive. <laughs> I have my kids in the car and they like speed up around me. I'm just like this, like very you don't straight. Flip face, them off. It's just, just like. like Dude, come on. What if you do that's it upside cool. down? What if not you go down? Move. No, see, that's mean. That's like, I want to fight you. This is just like, I saw you. I don't respect you. That was not Dislike. Cool. I don't yeah. respect Thumbs you. Thumbs down. Thumbs yeah. down. Dislike. All right. I didn't see this video of Justin flipping off the camera. It's like a, yeah, he he's walking into an interview setup and he's just got his hand down by his, I don't know if he's flipping him off or okay. he's just like is stretching out his middle Secret. finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not doing anything to be coy with anyone. He's just like walking there with his middle finger out. Mm. so i hope we're, the thing is we love him so much everyone is like what does it mean you know it's like room 238 like what does the shining mean oh. what's the hidden room with the crazy thing like what did justin do today i don't know <laughs> okay um all right so uh sorry about that that was a random poll room 238 i apologize no, if you don't I, know I got what you were saying i know you did most of everyone did it's no, a documentary about, about how crazy the shining it's okay yeah, um sorry. So what do we think Justin secretly hates more than the media? The Raiders. I'll go first. Yeah. Um, Except bad barbecue. Except, no, you're not you're not second. Bad, bad barbecue. barbecue. Bad brisket. <laughs> sure. He just goes around to all the bad like barbecue restaurants, just flipping off everyone. Like it, he gets into Kansas it, City it, a little like, oh early God. and just goes you around know? all yeah. the Casey yeah. barbecue place and just like, Yeah, you suck. Yeah. I, th I think the real answer is the people who don't put back their shopping carts. Oh, definitely. Uh, he easy. drives oh, by. Yeah. Be fun like a drive-by. Yeah. He'll do the drive-by. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Where are you at? We, yeah. need, we need a drive-by. Um, all right. So put yourself in a scenario where you were best friends with Herbo. And, oh, would I you have, do it? So would you of go course we would. to find people not putting shopping carts? <laughs> of back? course. That'd be awesome. I would do anything. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. I would actually. do anything. <laughs> I'll flip yeah. off a small child. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> he hates Girl Scout cookies. Let's go flip them off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Did they not put back their cart? Well, they're getting the bird. I'm no. sorry. Well, they're getting the bird. Yeah, I hate you. <laughs> Herbo's yeah. my best friend now in this scenario. <laughs> All right. I feel pretty sad though if I was like shooting a set and he was about to come on, he's like flipping people off as he walks in there. I feel pretty down. I would be like, "What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> he doesn't want to be here. But that's not his personality. <laughs> that's not you, Justin. It's not you. It's not your brand." Um. All right, Bullville seven one four. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to a Thier Kadir. Thier, who asked the question. Kadir, bulldog, my baby. I have a question for the coach. Which coach has the most <laughs> pressure on their unit to perform better, baby? More offense or Staley defense? Remember, I picked us to go 13 and 4 for a reason. Love you guys, FTR, Herbo MVP, Bolts will be champs. Bye, baby. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. Uh, Jari, Who's got the most to the point. pressure? Yeah, It's got to be Staley. The defense has to be. Staley's defense has to have the most pressure. I mean, it's completely yeah. underperformed for several years we blamed it on injuries blamed it the first year was first year was he didn't have his personnel he got his personnel then it's everyone's hurt 
Um, so he, th- there's absolutely way more pressure. Moore's a new guy, so it's you could give him that same excuse if he didn't have his tight end. He, the running back situation was up in the air, whatever. You you could find excuses um, to give him a benefit of the doubt. And he's already been a very successful OC for a, for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. Staley had one year as a DC and one really good year, but only one. So it's not like you have a something to fall back on. So there's way more pressure on Staley to step up. Also being the head coach, um, yeah, I I mean, there's way more pressure on, on Brandon Staley right now. Big time. Couldn't agree more. There you go, Athir. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to XX Kevon. All right, all right. Who asked the question? If you were the Tom, would you take a chance and uh, get shot for an even more explosive offense or eh, sign JJ3? Eh? Josh Johnson. I don't know what get shot means. Just like go shopping. Yeah, free agency. Go, shopping. go find somebody. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just I've never heard that term. I didn't know if there was something I wasn't quite getting. That's what uh, I'm that's what I'm alluding. That's what I'm okay. I'm yeah. drawing out of the, the words. Don't be so don't got. be so mid, okay? Yeah. Listen, if it claps, it slaps. Um <laughs> listen. If it claps, it slaps. All right. So uh shop for a more even explosive offense or sign JJ three. The offense is set. It's done. That's sealed up. It's yeah. now we it's got defensive backups pieces. on backups now. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's pieces for the defense. You need a safety. Well, I think that would be if you're going to spend money, you go pick up another safety or a yeah. nickel corner if you're worried about depth there. But I think I honestly think it's just safety. It's just one more safety piece. Yeah. I mean, you've already got Justin Herbert, arguably top four quarterback in the league. You've got, I think, arguably top five wide receiver core. In the league, the depth with, is crazy. Yeah, if, I, I agree. The depth now is pretty big. Even yeah. if a couple guys, like a guy or two, goes down, you still have a very <laughs> an, an off a receiving core that you'd be like, "Wow, that's great! I'll yeah. take that." Any and there day. are backups. So, I think that's what we're going for, XX Kevon. But thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to the K Man, who asked the question. <laughs> My question for all of you is. Who do you think amongst the starters will have the best year this new season? Thanks. I love you. Bye. I think you need to take out Justin Herbert because that's the easiest answer. <laughs> Let's take that out. I think I think Rashawn Slater is going to have like a next level season this year. Really? Like he's not going to allow any sacks. It's going to be like one of those. He has such a good rookie season. I don't. I, don't know I think he's going to c- come back and do that again. Yeah, I think. All right. I think he's going to go out of his mind this year. I like it. Um, I'm gonna be. I'm going to be very optimistic and hopeful that it's Joey Bosa. That he has like a. He needs one so badly. A we full need a season. healthy, strong full season out of Joey Bosa so bad. I like it. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to put those positive thoughts out there, and it's going to be Joey Bosa is going to have a, gi- a gigantic monster year. I, I like that. that. Um, I'll, I'll go with the, I'm going to go with the rookie. I'm going to say Quentin Johnston. I think it's going to have, yeah, I think he'll, he'll be in the talks for that offensive rookie of the year. I think that'll be, that'll be the case. I mean, when you've got a quarterback like Justin Herbert and fellow wide receivers like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and Quentin Johnston, man, I think is going to be that guy that uh, finds a way to get open and who knows? He trucks might, it down the field. He might have man. a couple games like where the teams don't have tape on him. They don't know how to prepare yeah. for him when he's running with the other stallions, the other chargers, if you will. Stallions. You know? Yeah, they're the chargers. Not I the like stallions. that. Um, but if he, <laughs> um, I think he could have a couple games where it's like, whoa, what happened? Yeah. Like a couple like crazy fantasy games where it's like, whoa, where'd whoa. that come from? Yeah. I whoa. think that's very possible. Whoa. Hey, <laughs> just stop. Did you see that? Right. <laughs> The K-Man, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Hangry Seth, who asked the question. Let's talk about the elephant in the room right now. Dicker, the motherfucking kicker, or Dustin, the leg, Hopkins. I'm guessing they'll battle it out through preseason, and whoever misses first goes home. But who would you want to stay? K, love you, bye. I don't know about you guys, but I've already kind of made up my mind on this. And I think I think they have a certain time where they need to cut Hopkins, and then they'll get all their money. They mm. just need to wait. I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, um, it's going to be Dicker. It feels cause, like because you're going to get a couple more million dollars by releasing uh, Hopkins. That's what we need right now. We'll just yeah. sign one of those guys we're talking about. And right. Ki- and Dicker did great. It did absolutely great. I hadn't 
first time in a long time as a Charger fan, I mentioned this on many a podcast where I wasn't like like this. Oh yeah. During kicks, I would go to the bathroom. Oh yeah. So I felt confident and I'd come back. Yeah. So that's that's how I feel about Dicker. Yeah. And I mean that that is not to say that we don't love Hopkins, especially for that no. game. Guy put everything on the line and, yeah. and we love him for it. Uh but we don't want that to happen again. Yeah. And I think that's really the only way that you can put it that like, we just can't risk having a kicker suffer that kind of an injury. Got to go beauty before age, dude. That's what this one is. Sad, sad, but true. So there you go. Hangry Seth. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Brian Beck who asked the question. Take a long look at Justin Herbert's coaching tree. Has any coach taught him how to play and win with the lead? Marcus Arroyo, Willie Taggart, Mario Cristobal, Anthony Lynn, Shane Steichen, Brandon Staley, and Joe Lombardi. Certified fresh as well. Hey. Hey. You, All right. Yeah, what do you at, think? You look at the, the tree that he's he's played under, there's a reason why there's a new coach every year. You know, yeah. like, there's a reason there's a new OC every year that he's playing under. It's because they all suck. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like he's been groomed to be, like, through perfect coaching. He's kind of mm. in spite of inadequacies. He's he an stepped in spite up guy. And played well. Yeah, 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 totally. yeah. All right. Well, hopefully that all ends now. Yeah. Kellen Moore yeah. clearly knows how to call some offense based on what he did with the with the Cowboys. Yeah. If he can bring some of that magic over to the Chargers, I think we're going to be just fine. So, Brian Beck, thank you for asking the and question. Don't be a stranger. Come back. Yeah, come on back. Now you're here. That's, uh, Brian, come back. Moving on now to Rebolted 2006. Who asked the question? My fellow Charger fans, election season is approaching us, and today I'm announcing my candidacy to make our sidelines shamelessly positive and push to bring back our Charger cheerleaders. What once was a growing economy of happiness and joy on the sidelines now lay barren to media figures looking to divide our franchise with false performance comparisons to other Football Alliance members that further demean the constituents. Uh, that uh, comprise our incredible 50-man roster. I look at the stands and see a great melting pot of people from many nations, backgrounds, <laughs> and religions, all trying to thrive and contribute to this great franchise, but are divided weekly on the way they celebrate touchdowns, interceptions, and blows delivered to our adversaries who dare to threaten this great stadium. There was a time this franchise stood united when our cheerleaders secured our field borders. Men fixated <laughs> their eyes on the same vision during halftime and timeouts, while women united in independence to look upon the dexterity and physique of our their fam favorite players while their partners were preoccupied. Our children were welcomed with smiles and hugs by these cheerleaders and were supported during uh, some of their happiest and darkest times. If you all choose to unite behind me, I will go straight to the Chargers' social media page door and knock day and night for Spanos to find it in the deepest parts of his wallet to bring back our cheerleaders. We will fill our sidelines again with positivity and bring unity to the cheering sections of all fans everywhere in this great city. What say you, Charger Chap Podcast? Do I have your support? God bless America. God bless the Los Angeles Chargers. K. Levy, bye. I support. 100%. I'll just say, um, I think I would do everything in my efforts to book Bolt Insights for however big that roster of cheerleaders is. I'll get each one of them on. We're going to do a full deep dive into their history, why they became a Charger, Charger girl, all the above. We'll do a 30 on 30 on 30 all on of 30 them. 30 on 30 on <laughs> 30. Charger girls. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to become a Charger Girls chat. Yeah. We'll, we'll give them the platform they surely deserve. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Not I'm, the one they need, but I'm the one board. they deserve. I will say that there's an element to this where there is, some of the guys that you sit next to that bring binoculars and don't pull them out until the game, the plays are over. That's kind of... That's kind of... It is what it is. We all know Listen, what it is. Yeah. We know what you're doing. We've seen it before. Yeah, you're not hiding it. You're not well. hiding it. It's pretty obvious. Pull those out during <laughs> plays as well. No, they're not at all. <laughs> no shame. No. So. No, but it would be nice to have them back, yeah. especially since we've it's had part them. of football. Right. It's not like we're asking for something we've never had. We yeah. had the Charger right. Girls before. and They were the best in the league. For... And it's, it's still a question as to why they left in the first place. But yes, we'd love to have them back. 
Rebolt to 2006. Thank you for that political stance on uh, the Amelia Charger. Amelia Earhart tracker. and the Charger girl. <laughs> we'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's move it on now to uh, Tom Telesco's burner account, who asked the question. Yeah, I said, how great is that J.C. Jackson is making a recovery? I knew he would. I had absolutely zero doubt in my mind. I said, let's go Chargers. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, guys. <laughs> I keep hearing Johnston is him. I don't know what that means, but I think it's good. Hell yeah. I'll say it again. Hell yeah. Those Ray Turds and those Chiefs games uh, eat lead. Oh, no, no. Those Ray Turds and those Chiefs going to eat lead, motherfucker. And don't get me started on what we going to do to the Russell Willsbrook and the Broncos. He'll have Sean Payton wishing he never came out of retirement. You never go full Russell Wilson. <laughs> okay, so my question is, how stoked are you for the roster to be healthy again? I need us to be breaking out for the best head trainer we can hire and get him in ASAP. Yeah, hell yeah. Hey, new look. All right, well, oh, yes. Somebody left you on their- YouTube. New look. I left my computer charger at the office. So hey. here we are. I'm here we are. Now. We're doing it live. Yeah, we'll do uh, it live. So yes, we all changed our backgrounds in solidarity. In solidarity. With Kyle. We're here for you, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, solidarity. You. We didn't want Kyle to be the only one. No. Um, <laughs> no problem. Uh all right. So um JC Jackson making a recovery. Absolutely. I cannot believe he the video they put up of him cutting and doing those drills right now. Like that's he yeah. seems so gonna be like he's gonna be ready yeah. for September. It really feels like that. He's got two and a half months before we play any like meaningful football, like when it counts. So holy shit. I was so wrong last year when I was like, all right, well, Dr. Kevin thinks he's never gonna play again. And I was so wrong. I apologize. <laughs> well, that's not all, all on you. That's what this, that's the information that we were getting. Everyone was saying, yeah. done. It's game over, yeah. donezo, see you later, sayonara. No. We're still going to see if he can play at the level when it matters, but he, what he's shown so far is great. Well, yeah, just the determination of wanting to get back out there, right. the amount of time he's put in this offseason, and if anything, hopefully he's given him more time to understand the Staley defense that he didn't seem to be quite clicking with when he first stepped into it last year. So, He's had a lot of time, and if he can be back anywhere near the level of productivity, it's going to be freaking awesome to see. Um, but the question as far as uh, how stoked uh, we are for our roster to be healthy again, pretty freaking stoked. <laughs> so stoked. 10 out of 10 stoked. So, so stoked. <laughs> it's just crazy the depth we have right now. If these guys can stay healthy, because at the end of last year, we were talking about like the bottom end of the depth. If our guys can stay playing, yeah. and they have a good rotation, and no one gets hurt, like... Yeah. Sky's the limit, man. Yeah. I mean, they, they haven't, and maybe they have made announcements and I just haven't seen, but they definitely made the announcements that they let go of the, uh, uh, the training or what, what was the name? Yeah. The, the head trainer, head trainer. So I don't, I haven't heard any announcements on if they've hired a new head trainer. It seems kind of like an under the radar thing where they wouldn't have like a press conference for that. You right. Know what I mean, I mean, they should for but, us for the amount of injuries we sustained. I but. mentioned it when I was talking to, um, to guilty as charged and oh, Tyler, yeah. I was like, we should have a draft for head trainers. They should, they should have a draft. I Great want the idea. guy with the best best track record to be our number one pick for yes. 2023. Yes. That's what we need. He's just as important as our <laughs> f-ing players yes. at this point. What's like, his RAS yeah. score? That's but all there I is no draft. Yeah, for tra- <laughs> you can just go get him. If you think yeah. the guy's that good, just go get him because there is no right. draft. It should be easy to find someone because it's not like, a, oh, shoot, we're picking 32nd this year, so we're not going to get a good trainer. Right. Like, go get the best trainer in the world and put him on your staff. It's like, yeah. come on. Yeah. Whatever it takes at this point. So Tom Telesco's burner account. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to OM run who asked the question. What are your hopes slash wants for the new training staff? I'm glad Staley is taking his time. They had the same staff for 20 years. These new hires could have a huge impact on the season. I'm hoping for a thickened kind of turnaround. Oh, also, can any of you guys represent the Chargers at Tom Grossi Comedy 30 and 30 fan meetup? Okay, so first of all, the hopes and wants for a new training staff. The best. That's what we want. Only the best. Only the best. Um, and uh, as far as... Uh, the Tom Grassi comedy. I saw this. I, I had no idea what this was I until they 
message, but uh, Tom uh, Grassi, if I'm not mistaken, he has a Packer podcast. And I think he's the guy that like, he would post a video of like fan reactions after the draft. And he would put on like all the team jerseys going like, oh yeah, I can't wait for us to suck again this year or something like okay. that. So he's doing a thing for St. Jude going to 30 different stadiums uh, all through the month of June. So it's happening right now. Um, and he's finalizing it at SoFi on June 28th. So the only thing about this is I looked at the po- I looked at the post, but I didn't understand how anybody can get involved. You said people can get involved, but I didn't see how he can get involved. He, so he, he says it doesn't mean it, maybe. Yeah. So I, I think it's obviously a great thing Sounds because cool. he's raising money for St. Jude and he's yeah. trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars. So that's awesome. And if I just knew how to be a part of it, then yeah, we would certainly try to be a part of it because you don't have to necessarily be there. You could come in on on the podcast or something like that. So yeah, for sure. Um, if we if we can get some more information, we'll we'll definitely check it out. We'll lock so us in. Uh, we'll we'll look it up there, OM Run, and try to figure it out. But uh, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Daryl Twenty One, who is Daryl Sandlin Twenty One, <gasps> who asked the question. <gasps> hey guys, Daryl here with a simplified name now, just like how our offense should be. Simple! Okay. <laughs> My question this week involves two players. Okay. First off, Big Mike. Oh, we all know he's been <laughs> absent for OTAs. Okay. But did you guys see the video of him simply doing stretches and lifts? Great to see, but have we heard anything about his back issues? If you have, please to listen. Okay. Second. Oh, second. How awesome <laughs> was it to see JC working the field? We've got to be blown away by how fast he's been heading our healing. And it is looking like he might be ready for week one after all. <laughs> oh, by the time we're all ready for this week's episode on Tuesday, minicamp will be <laughs> underway. <laughs> oh, hoo ha. Both the f up. FTC, FTR, and FTB. Can't love you by. Hoo ha. Oh, Daryl. Daryl. You've done it again. <sighs> yes. Yeah, so, yeah, Mike's absence from OTAs is certainly understandable, you know, as far as, like, trying to just get Just wait for the trainer to arrive before they can really give him the green light, you know? Right. Go hire somebody before you can put him out on the field, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, he's probably That's fine. He's probably perfect. Yeah. That would be the weird. That is true that I hadn't... Honestly, I'd kind of forgotten about Mike Williams' injury because I remember at the end of the year, like, wow, that's really dumb that he got hurt and that, like, in a meaningless football game that didn't need to be playing in. Um, but I just, in my head, I was like, oh, it's just like a little thing. He'll be fine. But now, I don't know, dude, these vets, like, if, even if they have something little, they're not they're not going to be part of voluntary. Load management. Yeah, it's just like, this stuff is, this is for the Quentin Johnstons to get their reps and be in there and learn the playbook. And yeah, he does need to learn a new playbook, but uh, he's got plenty of time to do that. So I'm not worried about him missing OTAs. No, not at all. Um, and yeah, JC's recovery, we've been saying at all episode is crazy, magnificent, a sight to behold, yeah. and can't wait to see what it all accumulates to. Yeah. So. so just seeing him and our first round pick on the same field at the same time yeah. and the same formation. I'm excited. Yeah, it's really exciting. So Daryl, uh, congrats on the shorter name and thank you for asking the <laughs> question. Let's uh, move it on now to Zachary Shelton who asked the question. If you could bring back any former charger to this team, this upcoming season, who would you bring back? I've got to go. We're always talking about safety. Let's go Harrison. Get Harrison Rodney back there. Harrison? Her- yeah, Rodney Harrison back there. Oh. With- Rodney Harrison back there with uh, Derwin would be insane. Ah. The only problem with Rodney Harrison is he would not make it through one single game. He no, would he'd be, be fine without in, getting ejected. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't make any money on the season. It, like he would be incredible if we were playing under the rules of the early two thousands. Mm. Um, but I, I do think that like outstanding safety is the way to go. Um, but Antonio Gates in this offense would be pretty lethal. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I lean more towards gate or freaking LT, put LT in any offense and yeah. it's insane. So, right. 
yeah, it's a it's a coin toss between LT and Antonio Gates' all time answers. Yeah, I I would say Antonio Gates again, just for his ability to find a way to get open. I don't know how he did it because it was just like you know that he, if he gets open, he's he's gonna make a catch. Yeah. And somehow I don't know if teams if defenses just didn't respect him or what the situation was, but now he's you know got the record for most touchdowns by tight end in their career. And so yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how he did that, but uh, if he can do it, then this would be, he would be a great addition to the team. And just for Justin Herbert, just another target. The more targets are Justin, the better, because then it's just like a shooting gallery. <laughs> he just needs to find the biggest target he can. You know, we could do good. though too. You could bring Fouts back, drop stick, Fouts, Herbert, Duggan. Pretty cool. Well, it'd be interesting if he's if he means like Talk about in their backup. prime or Dude, this as is they all, currently are. This is all prime. You're not bringing back a 70. I don't know. Fouts. I like the idea of current age fouts <laughs> Just doing like Burt Reynolds in the longest. Oh hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's elbow way pads. More, right. Way more fun. Elbow pads. <laughs> um. All right. Well, there you go, Zachary Shelton. Thank you for asking the question, and we go out of Ask Bolt Fam. With Coastal Eddie. Certified fresh. Who asked the question. Question for the pod. <laughs> hey, lads. Happy Father's Day. I see that the great castle so far was offering a chance to share a meal with your dad at the stadium. Wouldn't that be pure dead brilliant? Got me thinking. Who from the Chargers would you be having in the kitchen preparing the scran? And after you uh, all find yourselves bluttered and belligerent from your third dram of proper scotch whiskey, who would you least like to have throw your drafty asses out of the cl- on the curb? Kill your boy. Can hmm. translate that? What Trans- was the <laughs> <laughs> I want to answer. Well, apparently, I, I don't know anything about this, about having a chance to share a meal with your dad at the stadium. Is this a, a giveaway, a sign up? A- I don't know. Uh, scam? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't heard about this uh, Coastal Letty, but if it, if it is true uh, and you were had a chance to have a meal is with he, your dad. Is he referring our dad like Justin Herbert? I don't know. A meal <laughs> it's with not that's clear. Just, that's, hey, that's your daddy. That's not your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been worded a lot differently. Oh, Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> um <laughs> So who would you be having in the kitchen preparing your, I assume, sc- scran means drink. our food? Oh, yeah. scran is food, dram is drink. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so who would you want preparing your food? I think we all know the answer. I, well, I don't. Oh, Justin who, Herbert. Who makes yeah, a freaking brisket. good brisket, baby? Oh, brisket, baby. baby. Yeah, boy, sorry, I panicked. <laughs> I was like, you're so confident. What do you mean? I mean, I don't know anybody else that makes a good anything. <laughs> Justin True. Herbert is the only one that I know. The sure, that's the everybody. only surefire bet to get yeah. a good meal. He, it, and such a surefire bet that he invites like other players we've seen. And he brings it to practice. So he brings it to leftovers. practice. Yeah. That's done deal. Yeah. So I think Justin Herbert is the clear answer for that. But as far as the dram, uh, well, who would you least like to have throw your dafty asses out to the curb? Dicker. I picked Dicker the kicker. That would be a sweet exit. Well, it's who would you least like? So you. you oh, would... yeah. Not Dicker. Okay. <laughs> not some Dicker, huh? I mean, do you want somebody that's worst... like strong? To like yeah. give you like distance, or do you want somebody that like that you really JK like Scott that who feelings. can like can only like drag you maybe? Yeah. Or yeah, feelings come into play. Who's like the, who's <laughs> one of the nicest guys on the team that if they did it to him, he'd land on the curb, look back, and be like, What happened? <laughs> Why? Uh, Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. We gotta slow down. This question is who would you gotta... least like? So who's gonna do it the word? Like who's gonna make you feel bad and hurt you and it's gonna be bad? Yeah. I, w- I mean, Joey Bosa probably is going to launch you. You're going to face. He'll probably plant. say you're something break mean to you while you're yeah. flying through the air, which hurt your feelings before you hit the ground. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. Actually, I I stick with my original answer. Dicker. <laughs> I think now you don't want him throwing you out. Getting, manhandled getting by a kick, kicker. Getting manhandled by a kicker and a kicker. That'd be pretty brutal. <laughs> Just splits the uprights and kicks you off to the curb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I stick with my original answer. Digger the okay. kicker. I like, I like to get kicked out by him. Does it have to be team or can be team adjacent? 
Who would you miss? Team, you mean just everyone that works for the team, right? Because I'd hate for... I'm curious for your answer. I'll, I'll I, allow it. I like this guy so much. It would suck to be booted by Chris Harry. Oh, okay. I'd be like, what the f***, Chris? What the f- Chris? I what had did I on the show? do to you? <laughs> Twice. You're so great. Sometimes, apparently, <laughs> dick. That's how I, that's how I feel. Okay. Or the uh, brisket broads. Have they kicked your ass? Threw you uh, to the curb? Oh. They wouldn't do that, though. They're too sweet. But if they did, I would be like... They would. If it was a way to get in the they would kick you out. They've been working out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Coastal Eddie, thank you for asking the question. And thank you, everybody, for asking questions and Ask Bolt Fam. We greatly appreciate it. And thank you for sticking with us through the uh, technical difficulties. We promise to shore it up next time. But uh, until then... No promises then, here. <laughs> until then... Uh, I think it's going to do it, but any final thoughts? Hey, there's that thing over there. Maybe you should show them again because that'd oh, be pretty cool if you want to have one of these bad boys. You can put it right on your shirt and be like right oh, there. And you're like, shit. oh man. Like, well, I know those guys. Look at these guys. They're right Look here. At us. Look at us. Come join us. Let's <laughs> rock and roll. So, yes, definitely go check it out. Patreon.com slash Charger Chat. Uh, but I think that's going to do it for this episode of Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. Kill of your boy. You caught me off guard with that one. <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsors. Do you scare easily? Do you find yourself being unexplainably nervous? Then you need Corey Lindsley's new book. Calm the f*** down. Now on the New York Times bestseller list, Corey Lindsley's book teaches you about how to not freak out and stay calm, cool, and collected. So pick up your copy of Corey Lindsley's new book, Calm the f*** down, and start calming the f*** down today.